Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ben here, and today I'm going to be doing a Survivor video, which is a bit of a, a change-up compared to what I've been doing lately. Lately, I've had more of an NBA focus on this channel, basically because it's the playoffs, and I felt like um, that whole subject deserved a bit more attention. But I feel like I do have to do some Survivor videos to keep up with that, because it is supposed to be a channel that it has two focuses, so... Today I'm going to do a Survivor video, and it's going to be about Survivor Gabon, which is a very underrated and poorly received season of Survivor. You know, I also started out feeling lukewarm about it, but as the season went on, I did warm up to it, and by the end I was intrigued by who won, because it was a case where I was really unsure of who I thought deserved to win, and I was pretty sur uh, surprised by the results at the end of the season. So I'm going to be talking about uh, the final three and who I think deserved to win, why each finalist either did or didn't deserve, and kind of making a case for each. And um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, and I'm going to talk a bit about the whole idea of the bitter jury idea. I'm going to do a separate video totally covering this later on. I think it's a really interesting concept how, um, you know, one player may have certain aspects of the game where they were overwhelmingly better, but um, because of the bitter jury, they don't win. Basically, like Russell Hans and Samoa, he didn't win because the jury was bitter, even though the other two didn't play good games at all, and he played a, like a pretty good game and was probably the one that deserved to win, but the jury was bitter about how he treated them so he didn't win so I'm going to talk a bit about that but that'll be a whole separate video too just about the ideas of a bitter jury but okay so for today I'm going to talk about Gabon and spoilers ahead so if you haven't watched the season uh, be warned that I am going to talk about who the winner is so just have that in mind if you really don't want it spoiled don't watch it but um, I am going to talk about the winners and stuff and how everything played out so the winner of this season was Bob, um, and he played a decent game, and I'll just go through all three of them first and then get into their specific games and everything after I've introduced each of them. So the second place finisher on this season was uh, an older woman, probably in her 50s, named Susie, and then the third place finish of the final three was a woman named Sugar, and she was like mid-twenties and she was apparently a model but basically unemployed at the time of the show. So that's a little recap if you forgot who the final three were. Uh, Bob, Susie, and Sugar. And so I'll get into each of their games and why they should or shouldn't win and I'll start with Bob. So Bob was the winner of the season and he won based on this concept that I've talked about before which is like um, of the six types of winners he's the one that um, one based on a recency bias and winning the last few challenges. <clears throat> so Bob really floated along most of the season. He was in a majority alliance with like Corinne and Charlie that they were running for most of the show. And then when they got voted out, he kind of just floated and wasn't really part of any alliance or anything. And But no one really saw him as a threat because he wasn't a strategist at all or his social game was just non-existent and his gameplay was like pretty average so no one thought that he was a threat whatsoever so he just flew under the radar basically most of the season and only was relevant in the last couple episodes but what he got votes for is that he won I think the last four the last three or four immunities which is very impressive excuse me a second and yeah, I feel like that's basically the main reason he won. So, you know, not a great, one of the weaker survivor winners ever. And I think the reason for that is then when people pressed him in the travel, uh, final travel about his strategy and social game, because everyone had thought he basically played a very weak, uh, strategic and social game, he then said, I didn't need one, which is, pretty bad to say in a survivor travel council people said what was your strategy and he said i don't need one like he's just ignoring two-thirds of the game at that point which is pretty bad because as i've always talked about the three pillars are your social game your strategic game and your gameplay like in challenges 
And so he was really only the best person in one of the three categories. So did he deserve to win? I, I don't know. He had very weak competition, so I guess so. But really, I don't know. He was a pretty weak survivor winner in the grand scheme of things. Um, he was a likable guy. He And you would hope that that play into a social game. So, But he didn't create any bonds or relationships with people uh, like winners have done in other seasons. His The extent of his social game was that he made no enemies, which is like a good portion of the social game. But it basically was unintentional, which... You could say that that's a strategy, like, and just the way it happens is the way it happens, and it doesn't have to be, everything does not have to be intentional to work, but I would say that um, his social game was more a result of just naturally happening, and he wasn't uh, purposely making anything happen on his own, it just was like, he didn't talk to anybody, really, and didn't piss anyone off, so that's why he didn't make enemies, but he didn't have any close allies either, because there are episodes of the show where even the people in his alliance are talking about when they'll eventually dump him. So he did really bad in the other two categories besides gameplay and challenges. And he probably would have been knocked out if not for all the challenge wins. Moving on to the next person I'm going to talk about, it's Susie. Um, Susie was very similar to Bob um, in that she didn't have much of a good social or strategic game. And the main difference between the two of them is that she also was not good in challenges either. Um, so Bob had the challenges thing, but Susie had zero out of the three, which I think is stunning that I think the final vote was like six to three, which is really surprising that she got um, three of the votes when I think that she, she has to be one of the weakest um, players of Survivor to ever get three votes at a final tribal. Um, you know, she did not do much at all to deserve it. She did a bit of the Sandra strategy where she just, um, stayed out of people's way and her whole strategy was just like, as long as it's not me type of thing. But, you know, there are huge differences between a strategy of Sandra and a strategy of Susie. Susie made a lot of missteps along the way. She told Corinne to her face that she wanted to vote her out and she didn't even realize what she was doing at the time. She kind of just laughed it off and was like, Haha, no one will care that I said that. And then, although it didn't come back to bite her because she didn't get voted off, Corinne and a lot of other people started to dislike her after that, which ultimately can play a big factor on the bitter jury, and they might be less um, likely to vote for her. So uh, Susie was pretty clueless throughout the whole game, and I think that was her downfall. And she also didn't have the challenge wins like Bob did. They have essentially played a very similar game except Bob won challenges, really. You know, Susie did a strategy that's proven to never really work and that she said, I'm going to be a very hard worker around camp. People will appreciate that and then they will keep me around and not want to vote me off. And I guess it kind of worked, but like really people just kept her around because they knew she was a non-threat to win the game at the end. And they were like, there were times when members of the cast like Corinne or other people had kept saying like, Susie thinks that working hard around camp is going to keep her here, but it's definitely not and stuff like that. So I don't think that that strategy of I'm going to be a hard worker around camp really worked for her. It was more just that she wasn't a threat. So people were like, well, we don't need to get rid of her. But yeah, she did get three votes. I think it was a big factor of the whole didn't make enemies thing. So people were willing to vote for her. And she didn't get directed the question in Final Tribal like Bob did, where it was like, what was your strategy? And I think the, the fact that Bob said, I didn't have a strategy, really hurt him a lot. And he might have even gone unanimous if not for that comment. But um, no one directed that at Susie. Or if they did, I think she came up with just a, sort of like a BS answer about it. Because she really didn't have any strategy the whole time. All of her plans really didn't fall through. She just kind of latched on to whoever said that they were going to vote for someone. And was like, yeah, I'll vote for them too. So I don't think that Susie had much strategy at all. No gameplay. Social game was really average to mediocre below average. So I don't know how she got votes, and I don't think that she deserved to win whatsoever. But that there you go. She was your second place winner. And now third place, which I think is the most interesting of these three, is Sugar. Now, in my opinion, I think that Sugar was the runaway winner of this season, and I was absolutely dumbfounded that she did not win. You know, I... 
I don't know. I mean, okay, I thought it was between her and Bob because of all the immunity wins, but I thought that Sugar played a much stronger game than Bob, in my opinion, uh, just what I thought. Um, you know, she found idols, or she found an idol, I think. And if you look at, like, the la the last couple of vote outs, or almost all the vote outs of the merge, she was the one who, she voted on the right side of the numbers in, like, all of them. And was behind a lot of people getting voted off. She was behind Crystal getting voted off, Maddie getting voted off, Kenny getting voted off, Randy, um, Corinne and Charlie she had a big hand in. So she was a huge key to everyone who got voted off going home. And I thought that for that she deserved to win because her strategy, she was the only one of the three finalists who had strategy. And... The downfall of her was her social game. Again, like a lot of these folks having... she Okay, so although she had good strategy compared to the other two, she had the worst, she had the worst social game of the three in that basically in Final Tribal, she handled the jury really poorly and came off as like not really caring if she won. If you watch the Final Tribal, she like... they People are asking her stuff like, well, do you want to win? And she's like, I don't really care if I win and stuff like that. Whereas I feel like she would have won if she would have really expressed, like, I deserve to win. I played the best game. But she just kind of laid back and didn't care and was flippant with her responses to questions. And then when Corinne laid the nail in the coffin and went on this huge rant and insulted her a ton, Sugar could have tried to say, well, I'm sorry, blah, 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 and kind of made amends. But instead, she just stuck it where the sun don't shine and gave Corinne the finger, which didn't help anything. And I think her social game again just showing that she doesn't have much poise or grace to her but I thought that Sugar deserved to win she really was good strategically and to an extent socially but her social game and strategic game were a little bit blended in the regards of people like Ace how she kind of rode his coattails until she disposed of him but I suppose that's more of a strategic move but I guess just her flirting her flirting helped her a bit and that's social but it also bled into strategic. So she had a, a very mixed social and strategic game at some times. But when dealing with people like Corinne, it was like just a straight up bad social game. So really, she had the best strategy, but a bad social game and no strategic game. Or no, sorry, no gameplay like as far as challenges. So like if you call good strategy a plus one, bad social game negative one, and gameplay as a zero, she had like a zero total. Susie was a zero in all of these, so she's a zero total. And Bob had a plus one in gameplay, a zero in strategy, and a zero in social game. So he has a plus one, I guess, at the end, you'd say. And so for that reason, I guess Bob is your winner. But I feel like if not for the bitter jury, and if she hadn't made such enemies with Corinne, Sugar would have won this season. But there you have it, you know. It's not about who you think deserves to win. It's about how they handle the jury. Because in that moment, it's a lot different than when we watch it on TV. And something can be really clear cut on the TV screen. But in that moment, at the final tribal, it can seem way different to the jury members. And because they played with them, they're going to have a way different impression of those people. And they saw all of their game, whereas we only see an hour each week of like days upon days of filming. So they obviously know the situation a bit better than we do as fans. But... You know, we like to root for who we root for, and I thought that Sugar should win, but Bob won, and, you know, it is what it is. So that's my thoughts on Survivor Gabon, guys. I think that Sugar deserved to win. Bob won, and I don't know if he really deserved it or not. Pretty weak winner. Um, really, one of the weakest final threes at a final tribal ever. You almost want to say none of them deserved to win it. And um, it's interesting because at the at the show's reunion, people are Jeff asked the cast if Maddie would have been in the final four, would he would have won? And like everyone raised their hand and said yes. But even Maddie played a pretty poor game, had like no strategy, was really athletic, but won maybe one or no challenges, and his social game was really average. He was kind of always improving it. So like even if you go back to the person eliminated before the final three. Not a clear-cut winner whatsoever and no clear candidate. Um, if you ever watch this season, the guy that I think should have won is Kenny, who went out at the Final Five. He was doing really well strategically, and then Sugar caught on and got him out. But 
yeah, so that's my thoughts on Survivor Gabon. A weird season. Probably not going to be anyone's favorite season of Survivor. Not enough strong characters and personalities, but, you know, an, an interesting season in that there's never really any clear-cut favorite or winner that you're rooting for or expecting to win. So there you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, keep tuning in for more Survivor and NBA videos. All right, bye.